We are again reviewing the blessed subject of the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> His appearance in glory. Next time he comes, it's going to come in glory. Mm -hmm. In all of his glory. <coughs> now I've shown in previous messages that the second coming of Christ is, as is associated with the passing of the present heavens and earth. <clears throat> the day of the Lord in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements melt with fervent heat. And it's associated with the resurrection of the dead. At the last trump when the Lord trumpet of the God shall sound the Lord with Jesus with a shout shall raise the dead and is associated with the day of judgment yes. the coming of the Lord at that time Jesus will be revealed in all of his glory no no aspect of him will be veiled mm -hmm. and he'll be attended by the glory of the Father and the glory of the holy angels now I'm going to deal tonight with a, a subject it may sound a bit different, but I'm um, combating a certain heresy in this. The coming of the Lord will not induct an era where flesh and glory are mingled and faith and sight are mingled together. It will not be a period of a mixture of faith and sight. That's what I want to cover tonight. Now, in case this, this may sound strange to you, that anyone would believe this, I want to just give this, this quotation. This is a representative of a, a vast body of theology that's embraced by several people. In fact, quite a few. This is a statement. <clears throat> in the millennial state, there will be the open vision of Christ. The whole nature of the dispensation in which the saints in the flesh will continually have personal access to Christ must necessarily be one of continual knowledge and illumination. Some are of the opinion that the saints will not be mingled at all with men in the flesh in the resurrection, or at least that they will only occasionally be manifested to them. I know of no decided scriptural authority for the opinion, whilst yet I confess that judging by the reason of the thing, there appears some degree of plausibility. That is, he's saying it is kind of hard to believe that men in the flesh and saints in glory could mingle together. Mm -hmm. But this is what he believes. Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, it is evident that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are again to dwell in the renewed earth during the millennium. And as they will be of the resurrection, there seems no just reason why the rest of those who sleep in Jesus should not dwell on it likewise. I conclude, therefore, that the resurrection saints will undoubtedly dwell on earth and have power over all nations, though they will probably be nearer to God and continually behold His glory in a manner that will not be enjoyed to the same extent by men in the flesh. Uh, that... It may sound a bit confusing, but that, that, that's a teaching. The, the teaching is that at the, re, the saints will be raised from the dead, Christ will return to glory, but some folk won't raise from the dead, and they will remain in the earth and they'll be mingling. <coughs> people raised from the dead, mingling with people who weren't raised from the dead, and, and Christ in his glorified state accessible to people in the flesh, mm -hmm. in this world as we know it. That's what I'm going to deal with. Now, first of all, let's establish the nature of deity. I'm going to establish that, first of all, this is not possible. This is not possible for God or Christ in their glory to be in the same place where flesh exists. That's what I'm going to establish. That can't, that's an impossibility. Now, let's look, first of all, at the glory of God as revealed in Sinai. These are very real people. This is very real glory. But it was not God in all of His glory. It was very abbreviated exposure to God. Here's some of the languages. Exodus 19.18 Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as a smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. That's just very subdued. Revelation of God. Exodus 24, 10. 
They saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven of his clearness. That is, the Lord, he was, his glory didn't appear as he really was. You saw what was, what was around him. You saw evidences of him, but you didn't see him. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm making here. Exodus 24, 17, the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. The psalmist, he elaborates on this. He's showing that now they saw God, but not like we're going to see him when, he, when Jesus comes again. Not in that sense. They didn't see him. But what they saw was quite a sight to behold. They couldn't touch stand any more than mm -hmm. that. Psalm 18, 9, 10, and 11, referring to Mount Sinai. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds in the skies. Which means... God came down, but all you saw was gl physical glory around him. You couldn't see him. He was shrouded in darkness. That's, mm -hmm. But Jesus, when he comes, will there will not be darkness under his Amen. feet. Amen. He will not be hiding in darkness. Not when Jesus comes again. <coughs> That's a Sinai. <coughs> Fleshly eyes, in other words, weren't suited. For this sight of God's glory. So God had to reduce it down to fire, smoke, quaking, things of this sort. And that what they couldn't handle that even. Now God declared himself to Moses. He he opened up, he showed himself to Moses, but not like not like he's going to be shown when Jesus comes. Not that way he wasn't shown, but he he showed himself to Moses. And and here's what he said, Exodus 33, 17. The Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. Moses said, show me your glory. Mm -hmm. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he, God, said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to thee, to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by. Mm -hmm. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, we would say afterglow, but my face shall not be seen. This is to his friend now, he said this. Mm -hmm. Whom he knew by name, you shall not. Why will he not? Because you can't and live. Remember, my, my premise is that a glorified Christ and men in the flesh can't <laughs> exist in the same place simultaneously. Amen. God here tells this to Moses, not to your ordinary man in the flesh. This particular theory says that sinful men will be able to see him. Yeah. A holy man wasn't able to see him here. Mm -hmm. Now let's take any, another look at an example of the tabernacle. When God's glory came down, but it was very <laughs> subdued glory, but it was still too much for flesh. This is Exodus 40, verse 34 and 35. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So here was a case where God's glory came down, and it pushed out everything else. Mm -hmm. Nobody could go in where God was. Mm -hmm. So I hear the nature of God's glory. The more of God's glory that is made known, the less flesh can tolerate it mm -hmm. and is excluded. Now it's a statement. John made a couple of statements that are, that are pertinent to this case. 
John 1.18 says, No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He declared Him. He, he showed what God was really like, because men would not know otherwise. 1 John 4.12, He says the same thing again. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is protected in us. So that, that's, that's a very precise statement of the case, that God in His fullness, He's talking about in His fullness. Mm -hmm. He said, wait a minute, it says they saw the God of Israel. It says that of Israel. But they didn't see Him as He is. Mm -hmm. They saw a revelation of Him, a limited revelation of Him. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came, He declared the Father, but he, he was Himself personally, was the express image of God. But God didn't look like Jesus of Nazareth. I hope surely everyone can see this. His flesh concealed who He was. When Jesus comes, there isn't going to be concealment. He's going to be shown for who He really is. Now, Paul made some statements along this line too. Confirming that God, God as He is in His fullness, cannot be perceived by men in the body. Colossians 1.15 <coughs> Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Mm -hmm. Invisible to who? To the flesh. Mm -hmm. First Timothy 1.17 Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible. The only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Now, it's not invisible like a, like a germ is invisible, but if you magnify it big enough, you can see it. It's, it's not that invisible. It's invisible to humanity in the flesh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the zone of time, and in the terra firma of earth. Mm -hmm. And while men are in the body, that condition renders God invisible. God cannot be seen in that in the framework of time. Mm -hmm. He cannot. God cannot be seen in the framework of flesh. Mm -hmm. He cannot. Amen. He cannot be seen within the framework of this world. Mm -hmm. See, because all of this has been contaminated by sin and God can't dwell fully where sin is. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, the whole purpose of redemption is to, try to, to teach men this. Again, 1 Timothy 6, 14. That thou keep this commandment without rebuke, without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only has immortality, Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Well, that's a pretty, pretty good statement of the case. That the light God dwells in, to say nothing of himself personally, the light God dwells in, men can't even get close to it. Yeah can't approach it. They can't see it. It's impossible. For instance, the Lord Jesus is here among us. Here tonight. He's here. Amen. Where two or more gather together in mind, there I am. Mm -hmm. We know holy angels are here. Where church is told about the angels being in their presence to conduct themselves because of the angels. They're here. God is here. I will dwell in them and walk in them. But none of us can see Him. Because right. we're not adapted for that kind of sight here. Yeah. Hebrews 11.27 says of Moses, By faith he forsook Egypt, not for in the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. <coughs> I'm affirming that there's going to be no point, at no point will God, Jesus, in their glory become visible mm -hmm. to men in the flesh. That, that's what I'm that's the point I'm affirming here. Now someone said, oh, wait a minute, the word of God says all flesh will see his glory. Now it says this. Well this is true, it does. Isaiah 35, 2. 
It says the, rose, the desert will blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and, Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord. He elaborates further, Isaiah 40, verse 5. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Mm -hmm. Here all flesh means all humanity. Mm -hmm. not, not a generation. <laughs> He's not talking about a generation. All flesh will see it together. That's mm -hmm. post-resurrection. This is the yeah. point that I made. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here all flesh signifies all humanity. Just as Jesus said, just as the Jesus revealed to John when Jesus comes, Revelation 1 7, every eye shall see him. Mm -hmm. Not every eye of that living generation, every eye. That every body <coughs> is the idea. <clears throat> Someone says, Well, what about wait, what about Moses and Elijah? They were in glory and, and they were seen in the Mount of Transfiguration. What about that? And this also is true. But the statement is stated very carefully. Mark 9, 14, when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude of them and the scribes questioning them. Following that, he went up to this mount where he was transfigured before them. And it says that uh, they, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, Luke 9, 30, mm -hmm. who appeared in glory and spake of the deceased, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Now this was an abnormal condition in which they were given limited mm -hmm. and a fading exposure to Moses and Elijah. It was not a permanent type situation at all. Mark 9, 2 and 3 says that Jesus after six days took with him Peter, James and John, leads him to a high mountain apart by himself and he was, he was transfigured before them. Mm -hmm. Now listen what this transfiguration did. His raiment, they were temporal clothes, mm -hmm. his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow so as no fuller can, on earth can white them. So it, his glory, inner glory sort of burst out momentarily. When they came down from the mountain, his clothes weren't shining anymore. Mm -hmm. His skin on his face wasn't shining anymore. Not when they came down the mountain. No one down at the foot of the mountain. Remember they confronted this man who had asked his disciples to cast a demon out of his son. No one said, look how Jesus is shining. Mm -hmm. It wasn't eternal, it wasn't eternal glory that they saw. Mm -hmm. It was an accommodation to them. We gave them some limited brief exposure to his glory. But see, this isn't the kind of glory Jesus is going to come in. Right. He's not connected with that kind of glory. Let's start, now let's see what kind of glory is associated with Christ's coming. I remember, I'm saying that this kind of glory Jesus is going to come in cannot exist simultaneously with being in the with flesh in this present evil world. It, it can't. It's not that kind of glory. He shall come in in great glory. Matthew 16:17. The Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels. Then He shall reward every man according to his works. Notice he shall come in the glory, and, he's, and he says the glory of his Father, who already scripture said no man hath seen nor can see. Mm -hmm. He's going to come in that glory that nobody could see before. Matthew 19, 28. Here at this point I'm establishing that he's going to come in glory. Mm -hmm. Not in flesh, in glory. The first time the Word was made flesh. The second time He's not coming in flesh. Yeah. He's coming in glory as He really is. Matthew 19, 28. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that ye which have followed Me in the regeneration, mm -hmm. when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of His glory. So, you say, what about it? Is Jesus going to sit on the throne of glory? Yes, He is. In the regeneration, not in this present arrangement at all. Again, Matthew 24, 30. Then shall appear the sign of the sun in heaven. Then shall all the, tri then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. 
and they shall see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Glory associated with Christ's coming. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, mm -hmm. and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit on the throne of His glory. Not surrounded by people, but by angels. Mm -hmm. All the angels, and there's a lot of them. Millions and millions. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Again, Mark 8, 38. <clears throat> Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. That's established. He's coming in glory. We've already read it. God's glory cannot be seen as He really is. He can't be perceived by men. And this is the kind of glory now Jesus is going to come in. Again, when He comes in His glory, He's going to gather all the saints that are in earth and all of them in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now here's what it says, Mark 13, 26 and 27. <clears throat> then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and then, then, shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. No, that's, that's, that's it. There isn't any more. And part of the uttermost part of earth is the grave. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. And the spirits of just men made perfect. You're going to gather them all together, the whole yeah. thing. When is he going to do that? When he comes in his glory. What I'm saying is this couldn't happen where there wasn't glory. Mm -hmm. The dead couldn't be raised where there's not glory. The angels aren't about to go out and gather all the saints in an unglorified environment. Mm -hmm. This couldn't happen. You couldn't assemble the whole body of Christ in an unglorified environment. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it could contain him even if it was, wasn't sinful. <coughs> When he comes in his power and glory, then we are to think of redemption coming. Mm -hmm. Luke 21, 27, and 28. When they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory, and when these things begin to come to pass, <clears throat> then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption mm -hmm. draweth nigh. Well, what, what redemption? Said so we're already redeemed. Oh, the redemption of the body. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for the re adoption to wit the redemption of the body. Amen. When's that going to happen? When he comes in glory. <coughs> Your body can't be redeemed in an unglorified domain. Mm -hmm. A resurrection body can't a eternally raised body can't exist in a temporal time zone. That should be that should be evident to people, but unfortunately, of course, it is not. Mm -hmm. The redemption body is the purchased possession. Yes. That's Ephesians 1.14. We receive the Holy Spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, to the praise of His glory, which glory is going to be what causes the body to be raised. And again in Colossians 3.4, I remember, we're talking about him appearing in glory and what this glory produces. Colossians 3, 4, When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. will appear. Now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. But it will when he appears. Amen. Nobody will be secret then. Therefore, the, uh, the Christ coming will be attended with glory. Now... To establish a little further that the glory of the Lord, a glorified Christ and flesh, cannot exist simultaneously. That's, that's my proposition. In other words, you cannot be in the body, to be in the body equals absent from the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this is stated categorically in the scripture. There's no question about this. 2 Corinthians 5 6. Those that are in the body, as long as we're in the body, 
were absent from the Lord. Why? Because the glorified Christ and this body can't be in the same place at the same mm -hmm. time. Christ can be with us, but veiled, veiled he is. Mm -hmm. This body cannot survive a confrontation. For the unsaved, Jesus coming equals a day of wrath. Revelation 6, 17, they, they asked the Lord to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. Hide us from the wrath of the... Well, this is the glorified Christ that's coming. For us, it's redemption. Amen. <laughs> for us, it's changed into His likeness and to be forever like Him. But this isn't the way it is for flesh. It's a day of wrath, not a day of accommodation. When Jesus stays in a glorified state in the presence of the unregenerate, no, it's a day of wrath for them. Now this is a confirmed in 2 Thessalonians 2.8. I'm showing now the effect of this glory on, on sinners, whether in the flesh or whether in the grave. Here's the effect of it. 2 Thessalonians 2.8. And then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume, with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's this glory, see? This glory is going to destroy the the head of wickedness is going to be destroyed. Do you, do you think any wickedness can exist after that? Do you think this world can exist after the prince of this world has been destroyed? No. No, no, it will not. The glory of the Lord will uh, will rid us of that once and for all. For the saved to see the Lord, now for the lost to see the Lord, destruction. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. No one's going to, in the flesh, go visit a glorified Christ. <laughs> Forever purge that. Why don't you tell that to some Israelites that were at Sinai? They'd laugh. Mm -hmm. They'd say, hold on a minute. His feet touched Sinai. We, we like to die. Moses would say, well, I exceedingly fear and quake. He couldn't survive just this little bitty momentary exposure to Christ. We're talking about eternal things. Once Jesus leaves and comes back, he's not going to be in a state of non-glory or invisibleness anymore. Right. It's never going to be again. Have done with an invisible God after Jesus yeah. comes back. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be that way anymore. <clears throat> so for the saints... Then we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. The same vision destroys those who are ungodly. Mm -hmm. You see, they can't exist simultaneously. That's my point. Now, for his enemies, as I said, it equals uh, consumption rather than regeneration. <clears throat> for us, it's a change. Now here, when Jesus comes in his glory, death is going to be destroyed. This is stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 54. This is in the text. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump which shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now he reasons on this in the 54th verse of First Corinthians 15. So, when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, that's when the, we're raised. When the, He's talking particularly about the saints here, but all the dead are going to be raised. But he's focusing on us. Mm -hmm. When this corruptible that shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death, death is swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to ever die again after that. Amen. You can't have death swallowed up in victory and people walking around in the flesh at the same time. It's an utter absurdity. Amen. And yet this man that I read, his name is Phillips Brooks, he said it was. Well, he just wasn't right. That's all. <laughs> Then there will not be a mingling of good and evil because he's going to gather out the things that offend. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Jesus coming in his glory, Matthew 13, 40 and 41 says, Then that the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. 
So that there is never again, after Jesus appears in glory, there will never again be one saint ever side by side with the wicked. Mm -hmm. It's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a separation. Matthew 25 nails it right down. And it's when the bridegroom comes. Mm -hmm. And when the door is shut. Yeah. And the judgment is set. And the nations will be gathered before Jesus. He's going to separate them. They are, it's not going to be like living in Goshen when you're in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like that. He said he's going to cast them into everlasting fire with the devil and his angels. So there's this separation when Jesus comes. In his glory. Seems very really evident to me. No man can behold God's glory and live. <clears throat> and the glory of the Father is going to attend Jesus' second coming. Now in closing these things, it cannot be joined simultaneously. Mortality and immortality can't exist at the same time in a person. You can't have mortality immortality. The scripture says when immortality is fulfilled, death, which is mortality, is swallowed up in victory. That's the last enemy. You cannot have faith and sight at the same time. You can't have an economy where people by faith see Christ and then in the same domain people who actually do see Him. This is not the way it is. This is the day. This is the day of salvation, which we live by faith. No one's going to live by faith after Jesus returns in all of His glory. Amen. Then we'll know Amen. as we're known, and we'll mm -hmm. see Him as He is. It's not going to be an economy of faith. The visible and the invisible cannot be prominent in the same domain, the same time. Can't it? Can't be. Now the invisible, the reason it's invisible now is because of the, it would shatter the domain mm -hmm. for God's glory to burst forth would destroy the domain yeah. who we are. <clears throat> Again, a glorified Christ and sinful flesh can't, can't <coughs> walk side by side. Can't exist that way. Jesus cannot be seen as he is and men remain as they are. Mm -hmm. The dead cannot be raised, yet some remain in the flesh at the same time. Death cannot be destroyed, yet some people are subject to death. Some people have their saints being raised, and then we've got big battles fought after that in which people die. But when the dead are raised, death is destroyed. See? Mm -hmm. And the heavens and earth can't pass, yet men remain in them. I mean, this... It's not a mixture of a period of uh, a period of a mixture of faith and sight. Now these things should be very evident, but I say say them to show that there's a certain consistency in Scripture. That when Scripture speaks about God and Christ and their glory, it makes clear that as long as this world remains, the only way you're going to be able to see Him who's invisible is by faith. Yes. Yep. That's the only way. The only way you're going to be able to be aware of God is by faith, not. Uh -huh. Not by sight. And when people, there were, have been a few people in the world who have been, God has made them aware of his presence by, by physical phenomena. Uh -huh. Whether it was storms and lightnings and earthquakes and things like this. But when he did, nobody felt comfortable. Not even Moses. Uh -huh. Even on the Mount of Transfiguration, when a cloud descended, kind of a very, very mild thing, cloud descended on them, and boy, these disciples, Peter, James, and John, they were afraid. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to kind of tone them down. And just think how that compares. A cloud obscuring the whole thing to them compares with Jesus coming in all his glory, the glory of his Holy Father, the glory of holy angels, all the angels with him. They compare those two things. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus comes, uh, the, for the saints, the era that's going to be inducted is going to be one where we know as we are known Amen. And, and we behold all things and there's no more mortality. Mm -hmm. For the wicked, that's a time they're going to be cut off. Mm -hmm. And they, the, rather than having access to Christ, that's when they will have no more access at all. 